Hello, sports fans. I'm your host, Nicholas Austin Holiday, here for another episode of, of Between Classic Sports here at the Inkwell off of 50th Street. We've got our green screen behind us. I don't know if anything's going to come up on it in the long run, but it is behind us. Maybe Toby will put a little, little, some little graphics on there, make it look good. But today we are here to talk about the Florida State versus Miami rivalry, which is happening this weekend, actually this Saturday. And so today I have with me, I have George, I have Yusef, and I have Darrell. So this is the panel for the game this weekend. We got Georgia, fellow Florida State fan, Yusef, Miami fan, Darrell, a Miami fan. So pretty much what we're gonna do is we're just gonna talk about the game a little bit, break it down, a little position talk, what we think about the season so far. And that's pretty much how we're gonna do it. So does anybody have a little intro, anything they wanna say so far? I don't have much to say right now at the moment, uh, except for Go Kings, and we'll see y'all Saturday night. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the game. It's time for some payback after six long years, so we're looking good. Yes, Florida State has had a rough season, <laughs> but the Miami game is always a strong rivalry. Anything can happen, but anything's not happening. Florida State has won, so we're going to lock it up again this year, no matter what. You heard it here first. <laughs> okay, so let's just jump right into it. Right now, Florida State is three and two. They've had a little bit of a rough season so far, a little rough stretch. Miami right now is undefeated. I, I do think, when you look at it, I do think that both records can be a little misleading right now because of the teams they have played. Miami's had, uh, Miami's played a, a weaker schedule so far. Now, I'm not knocking them because you have, to, you have to still win the games. But you know, they played FAMU, was it FAU? FAU, Appalachian, State. Appalachian State, Georgia Tech. Yeah. So they played a little bit of an easier schedule right now. Up until this point, Florida State has played, I, I believe they played the number one set of offenses collectively in college football so far with Ole Miss, North Carolina, and Louisville. So, you know, you can't knock it right now. Florida State is not looking good. The defense isn't looking really good. But you have to take into account the offense that they have played so far. And maybe they're not as bad as their schedule is. I mean, as bad as their record is. But they have a lot of work to do right now. So anybody who's on the way in right now? Um, yeah, I definitely agree with your comments there. Um, FSU has definitely played some tough teams. And, uh, you know, USF is in there too. They're four and one, I think, so three and one. So they're definitely a good team as well. So they definitely had the harder schedule, I believe. Uh, but you still got to go out there and play games and win games. And we're accustomed to seeing them winning these types of games. But, you know, it looks like the record isn't uh, as good as the prior years. But I think they're definitely still a very talented team. You know, maybe besides Alabama, they're probably the most talented team in the country with the recruiting that they get every year. So, yeah, I would agree with that. They are better than the record. So I think, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be a very close game. But in the end, you know, that edge in Miami Pending the weather, of course, uh, we'll see what happens, but I'm going to go with Miami. Well, as we've mentioned, uh, yes, we play some tough teams. Uh, I can't, as a fan, I can't make an excuse for the defense. Uh, I have problems uh, with arm tackling, blown coverages. Uh, you can't not get lined up. You run a hurt offense, it kills us. But I do think, I hope Jimbo makes the necessary changes uh, to the scheme so we can overcome this Miami defense. Not really much of a mobile quarterback. That's been killing us this year. So I think it's, it's better we can actually kind of settle down. And uh, the offense last week's team, North Carolina, they had a great offense. But they were kind of that sit back, Throw, you know what I'm saying, not mobile quarterback. So I think this game, we can definitely go ahead and wrap it up. I know rivalries are always hard. And Miami is 4 0, I believe. Yep. So when you do play number 10 team, and I can't discount their schedule because they said Louisville played nobody. And we see what happened. But uh, I definitely think it's going to be a good, intense game, and I can't wait. 
Yeah, to, to pick it back off you guys' comments, um, it is a robbery. So I believe you got to throw out all the stats, no matter how bad, no matter how good they are right now. I believe right now, just from a talent standpoint on paper, Florida State's a better team. They may not play like it, but take into account the schedule. Um, minor coaching adjustments, to be honest with you. My, my biggest issue with Florida State, although I'm a Miami fan, is just Jimbo. Right now at this time, he, he looks like he's a glutton for punishment. He makes adjustments way too late. Not only that, I believe he coaches in preparation. He tries to save some stuff to prepare for the next game. On the Miami side, I think our schedule is just a little too weak. Um, we do have some talent. We're not deep enough. I'm a little worried about the young linebackers. They play well up until this point, but they haven't seen a team of this magnitude with this amount of talent all season. Georgia Tech was a decent team, but this is a good team that played a tough schedule. And although their record reflects three and two, they're a lot better than what that record shows. So it'll be interesting. Um, the biggest thing for me is going to be uh, the line play on both sides of the ball, particularly the defensive line from Florida State and the offensive line of Miami. I think they haven't been test tested. Um, Florida State has some struggles up front, but they're still overall a good team up front on the defense. They have the players, they just need to put it together. So that's what I'm looking forward to to see uh, who's gonna, I guess, make the bigger plays on those sides of the ball. That'll probably be the big, uh, the big outcome or determine the outcome of the game. So just speaking on what you said about Miami having being some young in some positions, it just kind of got me thinking more about Florida State. And one of Florida State, Florida State's biggest issue is their defense. Their offense right now is light years better than their defense. Agreed. So I, I think that, I think one of the biggest things with Florida State is getting a fast start as you, as you, as you talked about. And if you think about every game this year, outside of the Louisville game where they only, they, they was horrible. I think they only put up 10 points until garbage time. Outside of that game, I mean, the offense, when it gets going, it gets going. The offense got going against North Carolina, it was just too late. They got going against, going against Ole Miss, they put up a lot of points. They got going against South Florida and just kept piling it on. So the offense is really good. So I do think the point about the three true freshman linebackers you have is going to be a big thing because as Jimbo has shown, even though he'll get a little cute at times and get away from what he needs to do, I mean, when Jimbo decides to line up in the eye formation, single back, double tight, and just running down your throat, that's exactly what he does. I do think that's what he's going to do against Miami. I, I like DeAndre Francois. I mean, he has a lot more development to go. He's a young guy. He's a, he's a red shirt freshman. So he has a long way to go, but you can lead on the game. I, you have one of the top running backs in the nation, Dalvin Cook, who currently right now actually leads all power five running backs in rushing yards. After a slow start, he put up those stats against USF, and he hasn't looked back since then. He had a huge game against North Carolina, actually. So yeah. I, I look to see the running game against Miami front seven. I, I mean, if the front seven can make some big plays, if they can slow down the running game, that's going to be really huge, I think, if they have to sell out. DeAndre Francois, he's a radical talent, but he can make throws. So I'm not really big on Florida State's wide receivers and how that kind of works out. They haven't really impressed me that much this year. They're short. Uh, I, I didn't take the six five receiver doesn't get enough playing time, unfortunately. But uh, Jesus Wilson is. I think they have him listed at five ten. Uh, he's not five ten. Kermit Whitfield, they have him at five eight. I've seen him in person. Five, he's not five eight. <laughs> so right. you know, when you have five six and five eight receivers. It doesn't really work out well. Travis Rudolph, I mean, he's good, but they're just they're not consistent enough, and they're not getting enough. They're not tall enough, so you can't just throw the ball up. You have to be pinpoint accurate when you have short receivers like that. So it's going to be interesting to see how Jimbo game plans. If they can jump out early, I do think that they have a strong chance because if they can get up to a good lead and just run the ball. But yeah. if you have the same thing happen again like you had against North Carolina, Brad Kyle is way too accurate. And in the end, I think he's going to – I mean, I, regardless of how the game goes, I think Brad Kyle's going to throw for 350-plus yards. Agreed. Because they, they haven't been able to hold anybody down so far that can throw the ball. I mean, 
a lot of people don't realize if Lamar Jackson was more accurate, they left at least two or three touchdowns on the board yeah. in the first half of the game. Yeah, I agree. So I. We'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll let somebody else jump in. We'll see. Um, I'll jump in. I had to piggyback off of what you said. Uh, with Jimbo, the play calling, as you and I watched the game last weekend, I was just trying to figure out Dalvin Cook is arguably, in my opinion, and some other people may think otherwise, but the best back in the nation. Granted, he got some touches towards the end of the game, but if you're down and you're losing, you go to the well until it's dry, brother. And that's why I think Jimbo, he gets in his own way. And like you said, he gets cute. There's no way that Dalvin should have probably, I think he ended up finishing the game with maybe, what, 25 carries, a little bit more than that, and a couple receptions. So he, he worked. He worked and we had over 100 yards, but I think he waited too late for that. Now, if he does that against Miami, I think that's that's a recipe for disaster. But I think he's gonna come out strong. I think he's gonna try to set the tempo and run the ball just because of, like you said, the younger linebackers. And we don't, I think, personally, from what I saw in the games earlier with Appalachian State, uh, sometimes with Georgia Tech on the edges, we were not able to really set the edge or stop the run. So I'm a little worried about that especially if Jimbo gets it going. And like we said, once he gets it going and he's, he's in the floor of the game, it could be trouble for Miami. So that's why I'm now hopefully Miami can find a way to kind of combat that with, with a rotation up front. We got more experienced linemen, so I feel good about that. But then again, they haven't played a team up to this caliber yet. So we'll see. To be honest, it kind of worries me. Uh, the offensive line, I mean, I'm a fan, but they've been horrible this year. And I just, yes, Dalvin, he definitely can do it. He's the most talented back out. But then again, when you stack the box, I don't know if Miami is planning on doing that, like every other team has done. <laughs> right. um, I just don't think you're giving, you're confusing defenses enough. And my problem with Francois, I love him. He's, I think he'll be great. He's not that great at reading defenses. And I think he tries to go for it all instead of utilizing short passes. Utilizing in that old Miss game, uh, I can't remember how many uh, catches did Dalvin have. Oh, I'm not sure, but he checked down a lot. I, I use them more like that. I say that in the receivers, yes, they're dropping the ball. I think takes you get more time. Um, but really, honestly, I, I hope the offense doesn't get off to a slow start. I've never been a fan of that. And I'm like, you can't wait to have time to make adjustments. I don't like that. You go against a good team like Louisville, and you see what happens. You can't come out of the hole. But I think this game is really going to be decided by the defense. If we can get them settled down, hey, go ahead and just do your job. Marcus Walker, I think he's a great leader. He has the line. It's mostly our secondary. We're having trouble with it right now. But, uh, I definitely believe if Charles Kelly can get the defense dialed in, I believe we have a chance to take this game and hopefully not have Kai pick apart our defense like North Carolina did last year. I mean last game. There's no excuse to have 400 yards. <laughs> just, <laughs> I don't mean, that's just me. I'm kind of critical of my team because I love them so much. <laughs> yeah, I think the one – some of the keys from Miami is just to get off to a very strong start. Um, and all the games so far, of course, has been against weaker competition. They've just jumped out to, you know, big leads and just maintained that and won the game easily. Against a team like Florida State where they want to run the ball, you get them out of that mix, you put them down 14 to zip, something like that. Instead of get them out of their game plan, so that's going to be huge. And then also Miami has been pressuring the quarterback pretty good. I don't know where they rank, but I know they're pretty high up there in sacks. So I definitely think they could get to them if they know they're going to be passing down, you know, every down. They don't have like a singular star, you know, like a cloudy or something, but, you know, the tackles are good, their ends are doing good. So I think that's going to be huge for Miami. And again, it gets Dalvin Cook out of the game flow of running the ball. Maybe they can throw it to him. 
has been good in that, uh, you know, the last few games doing that. But um, some other teams from Miami, you know, they want to run the ball as well. They have had uh, two excellent running backs. I mean, Dalvin Cook's excellent, but uh, we have his backfield mate from high school, Yearby, and then we also got Mark Walton, which he looks a lot better this year. So I think that's going to be huge too. He's been finishing off runs like he was in last year. So I think that, you know, he was a true freshman last year. He gained the muscle he put in the weight room. And yeah, they're going strong. So if you can get them, you know, second and five, third and short, and that's going to be easy for Miami to keep getting first downs, get the ball out of FSU's talented offensive hands, and keep FSU's defense on the field. So I think those two things, getting out to a good lead, establishing the run will be huge for Miami. No, I, I agree. Uh, Miami definitely has a lot of advantages there with their offense. I do think one of the I do think one of their huge points in the game on Saturday is going to be their tight ends. If Florida State has had one group that rivals the secondary and being bad, it's the linebackers. You know, they're they're kind of non-existent. I mean, you have Matthew Thomas, a former five-star, all-world athleticism out of this world. He looks lost all the time. I was Derek Hoskins, the second linebacker, who looked, he looked really good last year. I, I was pointing it out to Darrell when we were watching the game. I said, I can't remember, I can barely remember any play where I saw where Derek Hoskins in on the play. He, he made a play on Saturday and I was surprised. I was like, oh, who, who is that? Okay, that's Hoskins making the tackle. You just don't see it. They don't make any plays behind the line of scrimmage. You see them chasing people down the field. They loaf, they're out of place. And I don't want to get into it because we're going to take a break soon, but I am going to talk about Charles Kelly and what's going to be happening with him at the end of this season <laughs> in the offseason. So we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with some more football action for you. 